Hello, my name is Phil Lamoureux, and I lead the Mobility Solutions team within Juniper's Center of Excellence. Today I'm here to talk about Juniper's position on automated control and orchestration and why it is so important to the mobile network of today. Automated control and orchestration is one of the five elements of Juniper's mobile cloud architecture, which is a complete view of how Juniper helps mobile network operators build secure, reliable, cost-effective networks for today and into the future. Uh, here are the topics I'll, we'll cover today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the challenges and trends. Uh, most of you should be familiar with the challenges, certainly. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the use cases and solutions, but mostly I'll talk about the products and services and how our uh, Junos, which is our operating system, how it was designed to aid automation and, and lead your networks into the future. There's a few proof points, and then I'll give an overview of Juniper's mobile cloud architecture in its entirety. So where are the challenges? The challenges come from um, adding uh, new and customized services, which increase uh, complexity. Um, it comes from multiple air interface technologies, uh, where air interfaces are operating in different bands with different coverage and RF performance makes management of the network very difficult. The complexity comes from uh, in, in converged or hybrid networks, if you have multiple access types, uh, possibly different modes of transport, um, and networks with mixed transport types, um, uh, Ethernet, um, optical, um, microwave, uh, and having to manage all of that adds a great deal of complexity. Um, and if you've got um, self-managed and leased uh, facilities in your network, um, having to manage the SLAs and the KPIs across both kinds of networks. Um, and of course, uh, virtualization of network functions and SDN, all of this makes um, the, the modern mobile network uh, much more complicated to operate than they were you know, in the past. Um, so the goal here is uh, reducing operational expenditures while growing revenue and maintaining network quality. Um, the, uh, the networks of today uh, have operational expenses that far exceed the initial capital requirements of building out the network. So the goal is to make, um, to use automation to get to a point where uh, you can run the network autonomy. And of course, this is not just one step, but it's multiple steps. Um, uh, in, increased use of telemetry and collection of KPIs and uh, uh, producing uh, actionable information out of those KPIs. Um, for example, using big data analytics and eventually machine learning are all steps towards um, be having a network that um, is autonomous, um, where it's predictive and efficient and adaptive to networking changes. So today, most of the steps that we take are would be manual steps. In the, in the network of the future, the, the changes uh, to configurations would all happen um, in an autonomous fashion. So what is Juniper bringing to the table to, um, to create a, 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 an, ec an ecosystem for automation? Um, at the very bottom level uh, on this slide, we talk about um, the, uh, uh, our devices, which could be uh, both physical and virtualized devices. These are routers, switches, um, and optical gear, um, as well as security appliances. Those are all, um, <clears throat> those are all, uh, some of them are virtualized, for example, the virtual SRX and the virtual MX, but all of those appliances are, um, at, you know, managed at the device level. Then as we go up the, the stack here, we have network awareness, um, network management systems such as Juno Space, um, which has uh, plugins or applications for uh, network director, security director, uh, connectivity services director, which are all um, uh, applications that run on the Juno Space platform that allow you to manage across multiple uh, devices. Then uh, continuing up the stack, we have um, SDN controllers, both for underlay and overlay, um, 
So for example, Contrail networking or um, overlay, particularly within and across data centers, and Northstar, which is for um, LSP management uh, as an underlay um, across an entire network. Um, continuing to move up the stack, uh, we get to the orchestration layer, which are generally um, uh, network-wide. So some of our um, contributions here are Contrail Cloud, which includes Contrail and OpenStack um, together, and um, Contrail Service Orchestration, which is a, a service uh, orchestration layer I'll be talking about in some detail later on. And then we have partners that help us at the, at the highest layer, at the OSS and um, network end-to-end uh, um, -end orchestration. Um, and, uh, and of course, that includes business apps as well. So IBM, uh, NEC, Netcracker, and Amdocs are three of uh, uh, the partners that we work with most frequently. <clears throat> so the key thing about Junos, which is the operating system for all of our routing and switching products and, and security appliances, um, the, the key thing is that from the very beginning of, of Junos uh, development, it was designed to be automated. Um, it operates through, um, uh, has separated control and um, data plane so that um, you can, uh, and, and they operate with uh, APIs so that um, it is completely programmable uh, language. Um, one of the other features is that we have minimal or zero touch provisioning capabilities for all of our devices, and that includes both the physical devices and the virtual devices that I mentioned earlier. And we support um, uh, standard, standards-based methodologies for automation. So a full DevOps model, which is shown here at the, uh, at the top, um, from code, build, test, to deploy, monitor, we use tools and support tools like GitHub and Jenkins to support a continuous integration and a continuous deployment of um, software as a as a um, as a service. Um, in the <clears throat> the stack, um, you know, we start at the lowest layer with uh, the the data plane, the PFE, and and the chassis level. Um, an important concept to understand as you um, move into Junos is the ephemeral database which allows a lot of the external programmability uh, in Junos to, um, to work, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. Um, in addition, there are, uh, we support standard models for um, uh, uh, standard data models and standard interfaces. So NetConf and Yang um, is, a, is a IETF standard that we support um, and have supported in the very earliest days of Junos. In addition, we support Python, which allows onboard programmability of, the, of each device. And we support external um, tools for, um, for external programmability as well. And I'll talk about a few of those in a minute. So JET, Junos Extension Toolkit, is, um, supports application development in C and Python. This is a, a way of providing um, uh, external applications or writing external applications that take um, advantage of the programmability of Junos, right? So it's all standard interfaces. Um, you can write your applications in Python or C or other languages that um, will support the uh, XML JSON um, interface. Um, basically, you exercise the APIs on the Junos box and um, as the and the the um, applications can um, uh, will operate over uh, upgraded uh, versions of the Junos operating system. As as you go from release 16 to 17, your applications don't have to be re redesigned every time. Okay. Um, another uh, key element of Junos programmability is on-box automation using Python. Um, and again, we take advantage of the of open uh, APIs that allow you to, um, to create uh, scripts, uh, commit scripts, uh, op scripts, and event scripts 
that um, that run on the board and uh, up on the on the um, the device and um, uh, work in real time. Right. So so these can be used um, you know at at uh, to, to commit um, new configurations. Um, uh, I, I mentioned earlier the ephem ephemeral database. Um, this is where we, we take advantage of that ephem ephemeral database. Um, okay. Moving on to the next solution in our set is to talk about Contrail. So um, Contrail is a um, uses open source um, cloud network automation initiative. Um, it is built to operate with uh, OpenStack. So, um, and we've, we interoperate with um, multiple OpenStack vendors. So Mirantis, Canonical, um, Red Hat. Uh, this is the most deployed um, SDN controller uh, around. So um, it, it, what uh, Contrail Networking does is um, <clears throat> it creates a, a V router to establish a network of um, uh, of applications or functions that you can manage uh, within the uh, OpenStack environment. Control Cloud then takes that one step further because it operates, uh, it provides server management and distributed um, scale out of, of, of storage, as well as um, uh, operating with specifically with um, uh, OpenStack from Ubuntu. And then um, we go on to our reference architecture, which are pre-integrated uh, and defined um, pods with integrated management. Um, and these are very easily deployable um, um, pods of compute and um, uh, management and networking for, um, for automation. So in the Contrail architecture, and I mentioned earlier that it's the most widely deployed SDN controller, what you see on the right are some of the key um, mobile network operators and um, other operators uh, and, and uh, enterprise customers. Um, in, in addition to mobile networks, it's also highly used in, um, in stock exchanges around the world. Um, the key to Contrail as I mentioned earlier, was the vRouter, which establishes, um, which is programmed to establish um, secure service chains of applications. Um, the uh, the key to the Contrail controller are uh, three functions: configuration, control, and analytics functions um, that uh, are used to manage the compute nodes throughout. Um, uh, whether within a data center or across data center, right? There are open APIs to, um, to connect to or uh, an orchestrator. Could be Contrail service orchestrator, could be other third-party orchestrators, but there's open interfaces to, um, to uh, allow you to con have visibility and uh, control of, uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, virtual network. <clears throat> uh, a, a recent acquisition by Juniper was uh, at Formex, which um, allows uh, greater analysis, um, uh, analytical uh, uh, power, and real-time visibility uh, into the, um, the compute environment. Um, so there's uh, self-healing, self-pacing, and scaling now that, um, uh, that is computed within at Formex which provides um, that automation or steps towards that autonomy that, uh, that I mentioned earlier, right? By having uh, real-time actionable data uh, about the state of the network provided by um, Formex, um, it allows uh, the network to become uh, one step closer to being uh, a more autonomous network. Okay, I mentioned the uh, Contrail service orchestration as a uh, service orchestration tool. Um, there are three kind of fundamental components to Contrail service orchestrator. Um, one is the designer, which allows you to uh, create 
new services out of combinations of uh, virtual network functions. So, for example, you can take a, a firewall and a CGNAT function from different um, suppliers or, or even you know the same supplier um, and create a service chain that can be uh, evaluated against your requirements. So, so many packets per second, um, so many uh, um, sessions, um, and um, and you can do the evaluation as part of your design. <clears throat> then you move across to the administrative portal where those um, uh, uh, new tenants can be brought on board, new um, uh, users can be um, configured. Um, the, the catalog of s services to be offered can also be managed and configured from the administrative portal. And then the final piece to CSO is um, the, the end user portal where um, uh, validated customers or, or uh, external users can um, de de uh, design their own um, uh, chains of services and, um, and locations for, to have those um, VNFs placed. Um, so the topology of their network and the, uh, the instantiation of new services can all be done from um, the end user portal. And of course, all three of these functions now are used to um, orchestrate and manage those functions across the network um, at, the, at a data center or, um, or among several data centers or customer locations. Um, uh, so the, the life cycle of um, virtual machines, um, the, the to total life cycle of, of VNFs can be managed from um, the single pane of glass. Um, so I mentioned earlier Northstar as a uh, SDN controller across the wide area network. Right? Uh, what Northstar does is it, it uh, allows us to, um, to, to manage LSPs through the network um, in a more of an automated fashion. So, for example, you can um, you can do uh, uh, design of custom um, traffic engineered paths, right? So this is a a, um, a uh, RSVP um, uses it, it's a it's a PSEP engine um, that uh, it uses uh, uh, IGP and BGP to to do the discovery of the network. And um, and you can and you use PSEP to create and um, control traffic engineered paths throughout your network. Um, one of the uh, 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 some of the modeling that you can do with Northstar is to, um, for example, plan um, uh, plan uh, for uh, uh, network impact when you have to take maintenance actions. For example, if you have to take a node out for maintenance, you can plan the impact. Or time when there's little traffic, and you can reroute traffic um, around that uh, that uh, that node with a minimal impact on um, on uh, a network performance. Okay. And coming coming soon is um, a segment routing uh, that'll be coming in Northstar 3.0. <clears throat> IPMPLS View is a um, in, is similar to Northstar in that it uses some of the same algorithms and uh, in, in, um, path, co path computation that um, that Northstar uses. Um, this is more of a, a, a network design and optimization tool. Um, it uh, it's it's multi vendor um, has multi vendor visibility and allows you to um, to visualize a wide area network. And um, and do modeling and um, guarantee uh, robustness and survivability uh, as part of um, the planning process. Okay. Um, the the next the product I'm going to talk about is Juno Space, which is the um, uh, network management system for uh, for Juno's. Um, Juno Space is is um, is an open platform that allows applications to be designed um, for particular needs. So, for example, um, one of the key 
um, applications we have a security director, which is used for uh, designing and managing um, the security appliances in a network. Um, so this would be the, the SRX series, the VSRXs um, can be um, uh, serve, uh, the, the, the security um, policies and um, um, the design of the, the network can be managed from um, security director. <clears throat> in addition, network director is used um, in uh, data center and campus and branch environments to um, manage the uh, connectivity uh, within um, within a data center or for campus and branch uh, type architectures. And then connectivity services director is used to design layer three services um, throughout a uh, throughout a network. Um, cross provisioning platform is used to with with connectivity services director to be able to manage uh, third party routers. And finally, services we have a full services suite for automation. When I say services suite, I mean that we offer assessment services to evaluate the network for suitability um, uh, for automation. And, and to provide recommendations on what kinds of automation, um, uh, what things can be automated within your network and offer a set of steps towards that, that path of full autonomy. Um, in addition, we can do design and uh, create some of those off, um, onboard and offboard applications to assist in, in automating your network. Um, of course, building and, and rolling out um, those app, uh, automation applications um, are, as part of our professional services, and then um, ongoing operation maintenance and, um, and optimization services. So some, what are some of the proof points? I mentioned earlier that, that uh, uh, Contrail is the most widely deployed SDN controller, um, and um, it has been you know, at, the ho at the top of uh, surveys um, for quite a while now. Um, in addition, um, uh, there's a proof point here about Wandel, talking about how 25 years of experience in path computation um, makes Wandel. Well, Wandel is the um, the uh, the algorithm set behind IPM PLS View and Northstar. So the um, Wandel was an acquisition uh, by Juniper, and uh, we use those algorithms. Uh, in our uh, PCEP uh, platforms. Um, some of the other proof points is have to do with our open framework. Uh, everything that we do, um, our, our NetConf Yang um, contribution to IETF, um, uh, open config, our open APIs that are, that are published, um, and support for third-party tools, um, plus the, the publishing of applications and tools on GitHub are all part of our uh, open framework, our commitment to open frameworks. So automated control and orchestration is one of the five solutions of the um, of Juniper's mobile cloud architecture. Um, there are presentations on the other four uh, solutions, and I urge you to go um, to take a look at those. Um, all of this is geared towards the um, uh, the evolution and automation of mobile networks everywhere. So wrapping up the, the mobile cloud architecture, um, the, the uh, things to, to consider when comparing this set of architectures to, to others is um, do we support the key mobile use cases, which we can talk about separately. Um, we have a best of breed partner ecosystem the, the top um, orchestrators uh, available, and we have um, best-in-class lifecycle support and, uh, and services. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you'll continue to talk to Juniper about automating your network. Thanks.